Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to day six of our distance learning. So for this week, uh, we're going to uh, leave sequences and series on the side first. We're going to go back to exponential expressions. But for this week, we're going to be focusing on solving exponential equations. All right, so pretty much um, we'll have to recall what we've um, discussed the last few weeks uh, before we actually went to sequences and series. And then hopefully um, our review here would actually be helpful in refreshing your mind about it. But before we actually go to our lesson for the week, let us actually go over the online guidelines. And here we go. Okay, so uh, please be reminded that the PGCPS administrative procedures regarding appropriate use of technology, social media, and email continue to apply to our online instruction. In addition, this session may not be recorded without the instructor's consent. So as what we've been talking about these last few weeks, since this is already a pre-recorded video, uh, definitely you cannot distribute it without my permission. But if you would like to share it uh, to a friend of yours who you feel would actually uh, benefit from viewing my lesson, do let me know. Send me an email so I can send you a written permission to actually allow them to view the video. A description of the applicable procedures is provided online in the Student Rights and Responsibilities Handbook. Thank you for your cooperation. So as I've been mentioning the last few weeks as well, um, the student handbook is always accessible through the PGCPS portal. If you would not like to navigate the PG portal, you may of course uh, go back to Google Classroom, um, scroll all the way down because it is one of the earliest things I posted and you can definitely find a link there to take you to the student handbook. All right, so now that this is um, out of the way, we can now begin with our lesson for the week, which is about solving exponential equations. And here we go. All right, so solving exponential equations, including introduction to logarithms. So uh, for those who are aware of what logarithms are, this wouldn't be news for you. But for those who have never heard of what logarithms are, hopefully I will be able to introduce it really well because we will definitely have a lot to do with this as we go on for the next few weeks. So the objectives for this week is to be able to solve exponential equations algebraically and or with the use of technology. So when I uh, refer to this one as uh, using technology, I mean we are going to use Desmos. Okay, so um, I prefer to use Desmos in this video because I feel that it is more accessible to most as opposed to using Texas Instruments. Of course, um, I will uh, be posting uh, some notes on how to use Texas Instruments, your TI calculators on solving exponential equations. Okay, and then our last objective for the week is to define logarithms and transform exponential expressions to logarithmic expressions, also vice versa. All right, so now that we have finished with um, talking about what the objectives are, right, let's go over with reviewing and a preview of what the, of what the lesson will be. So for review, uh, we have the general equation for exponential expression, which is y is equal to a times m raised to the x minus h plus k. So notice, this one is the uh, general equation for an exponential expression. So a is the y-intercept, m is the base, h and k are actually horizontal and vertical translations. So I hope you do remember those. If not, please, of course, view the uh, previous videos or scroll over to the notes. 
uh, for this particular lesson, the presence of bases and exponents is not restricted on one side. So if you would look at our general exponential expression, um, the base m and the exponent x minus h are all found on the right side. So for this particular lesson, we're going to consider scenarios wherein both sides, left and right, would have bases and exponents. All right, so the goal for this lesson, for the week, is to be able to learn how to solve exponential equations algebraically and graphically. Graphically, I think um, the essence is still the same. Make sure that you are able to put in the right expression to be graphed, graph them, then find the intersection. So that is pretty much the essence of how we're going to solve it graphically. But of course, before we solve them graphically, we will solve it algebraically so that we know whether our algebraic solution matches with our graphical solution. All right. So here are the general steps to solving exponential equations. So these three steps are the three things that we have to consider when we are solving exponential equations. Okay. From the general equation of exponential expressions, y is equal to a times m raised to the x minus h plus k, a and k must be eliminated or transformed. So take note that a and k here should not exist for any side. If it's present on either the left or the right or both of them, then we have to uh, perform procedures which would allow us to remove a and k from either side. When these expressions disappear, then both sides would appear as an expression m raised to the x minus h. Okay, only a base and its particular exponent. All right, so this is step one, remove a and k. Step number two, okay, so once each side is expressed as an exponential expression, having only a base and an exponent, we are now going to use loss of exponents to ensure that the expressions on both sides have the same base, right? So if the base on one side is different from the other, then we have to use loss of exponents to make sure that their bases will be the same. This is the second procedure. So eliminate A and K first. Next, make, make the bases the same. And then finally, the third procedure, once the bases are the same on both sides, equate the exponents and solve algebraically. So this one is pretty straightforward. It follows the principle that in an exponential equation, if bases are the same, the exponents should also be the same. All right. Okay, so now that we know the general steps in solving exponential equations, we're actually going to put them in practice as we solve some particular examples. All right, so here's our first example. Solve the equation. 27 is equal to 3 times 2 raised to the x plus 1 plus 3. So in this case, only 2 is raised to the exponent x plus 1. All right? So if you would like to actually solve it on your own, because this is pretty much, I think, straightforward, I think you can even try to, like, substitute numbers for x, eventually come up with your answer. Of course, um, you may pause the video, try to work it out on your own, and then later you may unpause the video and then see our solution and eventually check your answer. All right, I think that's enough time for you to have paused the video, tried to figure it out on your own, and then unpause it to actually view the answer, all right, and see the solution, whether it matches your own or how close your solution was. All right, 
So here we go. So this is the expression we're going to be solving. 27 is equal to 3 times 2 raised to the x plus 1 plus 3. So notice the first procedure. The first procedure is to actually remove a and k. So we have to remove the 3 here and the plus 3 over there. Now because of PEMDAS, the, uh, the, the first one we're going to actually remove is the k part. This is the first thing we're going to remove. So to remove that, we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. This gives us 24 is equal to 3 times 2 raised to the x plus 1. All right? So once the K has been removed, we're now going to proceed to removing the A. So to remove the A, which is this expression, we're going to divide both expressions by, of course, the value of A. So 24 divided by 3, that is 8. 3 cancels out. So you are left here with 2 raised to the X plus 1. So from here on out, I think it's pretty much straightforward. I think even if we have, if we don't proceed to step number two and step number three, you would be able to figure out what the answer is. Okay, but just to make sure that there is consistency, we are actually going to um, continue with step number two and step number three, so that you actually are guided on how to work exponential equations. So we're finished with step number one, which is to remove a and k. Now we go to step number two. Which, uh, which states that we have to make sure that the bases are the same. All right. So now let's look at the base here. So this one, the base is 2. On the right side, the base is 2. On the left side, the base is actually 8. So it's a different base. So our goal is to make sure that they both have the same base. Hmm. Very challenging. Oh, not really. Because... If you think hard enough, you would realize that 8 is actually a power of 2. It is possible to express 8 as a power of 2. 8 is simply 2 raised to the third power. There you go. All right. So by expressing 8 as 2 cubed, we have now successfully completed step number two, wherein we have to make the bases the same for both left and right sides of the equation. All right. So now that we're done with step number two, we can now proceed with step number three. So what is step number three? Step number three, once you've achieved step number two, you just have to look at now the exponents and you follow the principle that once the bases are the same the exponents should also be the same so if both bases are two then therefore the exponents three on the left side should be the same as x plus one which was on the right side and then from here on out we just apply algebra so to solve for x here, we just subtract 1 to both sides. All right, giving us x is equal to 2. All right, so therefore, if we are asked to solve this exponential equation, right, the answer for this is x is equal to 2. All right. Okay, so hopefully uh, that wasn't too hard. Let's actually try and check whether um, our uh, algebraic uh, solution is correct or our algebraic answer is correct. And then later, I'll show you how to verify that using decimals. Okay. All right. So here we go. All right. So um, here we go. All right. So finally, we do come to x is equal to 2 over here all right so notice the procedures all right it's pretty much um similar to how i actually solved it using the whiteboard this is just 
slower way of doing that. Okay, but eventually, we do get to x is equal to 2. All right, so now how are we going to solve this by using Desmos? All right, to use Desmos to solve this, all we have to do is to make sure that we just equate the left side and the right side to two expressions of y. So the first equation for our um, Desmos graph would be y is equal to 27, and then we will have a second expression for our Desmos uh, equation, which would be y is equal to 3 times 2 raised to the x plus 1 plus 3. All right. So let's actually try that. Let's go to um, Desmos. All right. So here we go. This is um, Desmos. We're going to start graphing. So as I mentioned, we have to actually create two y expressions here. Uh, the first y is going to be equal to the left side of the equation earlier. The right side, uh, I mean the second y expression, would be equal to the sec uh, to the y uh, to the um, right side of the equation. So the first part is y is equal to twenty seven. Right, I'm going to reduce this. Okay, so notice um, this is a red graph. It's actually this one. So it's a straight line, which can be expected because y is equal to a particular number represents a straight line. Right. Now we're ready for the second expression. So in this particular case, we have y is equal to, so it has to be 3, all right, times 2 raised to the, all right, so as an... To express exponents, you have to use the caret symbol. So just to show that, right, I actually access this one. So the caret symbol huh, it's not showing here. Maybe it's under here at ABC. No, this is um subscript. All right. Anyways, the caret symbol, all right, let me, um, I guess, no, it doesn't show. It's, um, oh, no, wait. I'll, um, I'll use that caret symbol first, and then I'll show you what the symbol is. So this is, oh, by the way, uh, when you're using Desmos and the exponent is not a single expression, make sure you put the exponents inside the parentheses. Okay, so here we go. This is now, this is now our two uh, functions. So we're going to graph them, which is shown here on the right. And then to find where they are, and now find out how to solve them, we just have to figure out where the intersection is. So notice the intersection is on this dot, and notice what the x value is. The x value is simply 2, which is actually what we determined earlier. Right, so before we actually proceed to the next example, All right, so for those who are not aware what the caret symbol is, the caret symbol looks like this. All right, it's like, it's like a private symbol, you know, in the military, right? So in my keyboard, I see it as actually the, um, the, the symbol above the number six, right? So therefore, to use the caret symbol, I just have to press shift, then press 6, and then I have the caret now. But I'm pretty sure you'll figure it out when you are actually um, doing it on your own. All right. So now that we've done with that, okay, let's check. Um, let's continue on with our... Mm. 
with our lesson. So let's check. Um, okay, so here, here we are. So this is the um, Desmos screenshot. And indeed, it does happen at x is equal to 2. All right. And if you actually figure out so what the intersection was, definitely it should be 27. Okay, so I hope uh, the first example is, was explained quite clear. Right, we're going to go over to the second example. Now, the second example is a little more difficult. Okay, but definitely I'll show you. All right, so here we go now. So this is our next example. Solve the equation. 125 raised to the x plus 1 is equal to 25 raised to the 2x minus 1. Okay, so if you would like to actually um, try this out on your own, without graphing, of course, algebraic approach first, just to make sure that you are aware of how to do it using algebraic uh, procedures. You may pause the video, work it out on your own, and then <clears throat> unpause it, and then you can see our solution and check whether your answer is right or not. All right, I think that should be um, good enough already. All right, so let's actually try and see uh, what the answer is, all right, and see how we actually get to that particular answer. Okay, so here we go. So the, uh, the exponential equation is 125 raised to the x plus 1 is equal to 25 raised to the 2x minus 1. So notice, in this particular equation, there is no more a and k. There is no coefficient in between the expressions here. And there are no numbers here being added or subtracted after the base and the exponent. So therefore, pretty much we are done with Step number one, which is to remove A and K. That means we go straight to step number two. Okay, now, the thing is, step number two um, tells us that we have to express both, all right, both expressions such that they would have the same base. All right, so the question is 125 and 25, okay. So how are we going to do this so that both expressions would have the same base. Hmm. Okay. Now, um, basing from the example earlier, you might think that you have to think of a particular exponent such that 125 raised to a particular exponent is 25. You might be thinking something like this, 125 raised to a particular exponent is 25. Or... 25 raised to a particular exponent is equal to 125, right? Although this procedure is actually good, this one is more complicated, right? So we're not going to use such an approach. Our approach is to figure out whether 125 and 25 have a common base. After a little thinking, we can determine that 125 can be expressed as 5 raised to the third power, while 25 can be expressed as 5 raised to the second power. So notice 125 and 25 have a common base of 5, and this is the easier procedure to follow. Right? Although it is possible to determine uh, or to convert 25 into an expression of 125 raised to a particular exponent or 25 raised to a particular exponent is 125, that might take a while. So if you could not figure out uh, a particular straight conversion so that one base becomes a power of the other base, you can actually just try to find a common base that they both have. In this case, that is 5. Right? So now that we have figured out that 125 is 5 cubed, 
that is simply, all right, we're just going to put in the other exponents here, x plus 1 there. And for 25, so that's 5 squared, 2x minus 1 should also be here. All right. Okay. So the question here is, are we actually finished with step number 2? No. Because remember, in step number 2, after figuring out, or after making sure that their bases are the same, we're supposed to use loss of exponents to simplify expressions. So in this case, all right, this 5 here has two exponents, 1, 3, and 1, x plus 1. According to loss of exponents, if you have this expression, the exponents need to get multiplied. So this becomes 5 raised to the 3 times x, which is 3x. Then you'll distribute the 3, of course. So 3 times 1, that's plus 3. All right. So therefore, this expression here, 5 cubed raised to the x plus 1, can be simplified to 5 raised to the 3x plus 3. We're going to do the same procedure for 5 squared. So again, these exponents need to be multiplied with each other. And when you multiply them, you would have to distribute, of course, the 2 here on the inside. So 2 times 2x, this is 4x. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. All right. Now that we've done that, okay, we can definitely now conclude step number 2. All right. So we're finished now with step number 2. We're now ready for step number 3, which is usually the easiest step. So once... The exponents have been simplified and the bases are the same. You can now proceed to equating the exponents with each other because once bases are the same, exponents should also be the same. All right, here we go. Okay, now um, usually I prefer all the x terms on the left side and all the non-x terms on the right side. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove the x term here on the right side by subtracting 4x on both sides. I am going to remove the numbers here on the left side by subtracting 3. Okay, so this one disappears. This one also disappears. I have 3x minus 4x, that's negative x. Negative 2 minus 3 is simply negative 5, right? Take note that we are solving for x and not negative x. Thus, we still have to divide both sides by negative 1. In which case, we get x is equal to 5. All right. So for this particular example, all right, we are able to solve for x being 5. Right, so let's go back to our um, discussion earlier and see whether this solution actually is correct or um, the final answer we have matches with the one we were discussing. All right. Okay. Well, here we go. So we do get x is equal to 5 from solving them, and then we verify it through decimals, All right? So substitute, uh, equate uh, first uh, y expression, y is equal to the left side, which is 125 raised to the x plus 1. Second y expression, y is equal to 25 raised to the 2x minus 1, All right? So this one is uh, very, very tight. Notice how big the numbers are. 4 times 10 to the 12. So this is like 4 followed by 12 zeros. So this is a very, very big y value. All right. And if you look closely here, notice how the graphs are very close to each other. All right. Eventually, they do intersect at this particular point, okay, which has a y coordinate of 5. So this definitely verifies our algebraic solution. So take note, I am not concerned with what the y-coordinates are. Maybe in some tests, you might be asked what the y-coordinates are, in which case you simply have to substitute the 5 for the x value. All right. 
Okay, so hopefully those um, uh, two examples were uh, explained clearly. If not, don't forget to actually post questions in our weekly Google Docs so I can definitely help you out to understand it better. All right, the next part is actually, I think, about logarithms. Logarithms. Okay, so logarithms is the inverse of exponentiation. So in, in the same way that uh, subtraction is the opposite or the inverse of addition, the inverse of exponentiation is called logarithms, right? Pretty much, logarithms are expressions you use to solve for unknown exponents. Okay, so to be able to actually uh, apply logarithms, we have to understand how it interchanges from, a logarith uh, from an exponential form into a logarithmic form. So this part, okay, note that I actually removed the A, the K, and the H. Right, because those are just extra and those are definitely needed to be taken care of uh, before you actually um, solve any exponential equation. So given this particular exponential expression, y is equal to m raised to the x. So in this particular uh, expression, we're going to be solving for x, okay, the exponent. Right? So to be able to solve for the exponent, you actually have to use logarithm. All right, so notice how the form changes. The exponent from the original exponential equation becomes the unknown. It's the one isolated on one side. The m here, which is the base, actually becomes a subscript of the logarithm. So it's logarithm, and then you write the m a bit lower. It's a subscript. And then the power here, is actually written here after the logarithm and the subscript, of, which is the base. So this is actually the form of how you convert an exponential equation into a logarithmic equation. All right. So the next two examples are actually uh, going to try whether you could convert it from one form or the other. Let's try and go. Let's try and visit them. Right. So here we have um, several exponential equations and we are going to convert them to logarithmic equations. Okay, so um, we're only go, uh, if you'd like to try them out on your own, um, you may pause the video, try to write them out on your own. And then when you're ready, you can unpause the video and then you can see whether your answers are correct. Right, I think that's um, that's enough time to allow you to pause the video, try to answer it on your own, and then unpause it later to verify your answers. All right, so um, I will of course um, solve numbers one and four just to show you how you can do that. All right, so here we go. 5 to the third is equal to 125, definitely true. All right. So take note of how uh, logarithms are um, transformed from exponential expressions. So this one is of the form, I'm going to put the y here. All right. So 125 represents your y. M is represented by your 5, and then X, of course, goes with 3. All right? So this is pretty much the form. Now, to convert it to logarithmic, it becomes the form X is equal to log Y to the base M. All right? So all we have to do is to simply follow the format. So it's going to be logarithm. The base m, which is, of course, 5. So there's a subscript of 5 there. Followed by 
the power y, which was the expression alone here earlier. That's 125. And it should be equal to the original exponent, which is 3. All right. So therefore, this is the logarithmic expression equivalent to the one earlier. All right. So we're going to use the same approach to answer the next problem. Okay. So we're, saying, uh, we're, all, uh, we're already going to go with this format. Okay. So it's going to be logarithm. First, the base subscript. So in this particular case, the base is simply 2. Right? And then it's followed by y. So y was the original power. In this case, it was that expression, the one which is on the other side of the base and the exponent. So in this case, it would actually be the 1,000. So logarithm of 1,000 to the base 2 is equal to what was the exponent earlier, right? The exponent earlier was simply x plus 5. And this is, of course, the logarithmic um, expression, which is equivalent to the second one. All right. So let's see whether this um, answers actually check out with... Um, the answers provided here. All right, so for number one, five cube is equal to 125. Number four, we have uh, two raised to the x plus five is equal to 1,000. And we have it here. Five cube is equal to 125. So the exponent is alone. Three is equal to logarithm. Take note that the base is a subscript. And the power, which was alone, earlier becomes part of the logarithm. So it's logarithm of 125 to the base 5. Looking at number 4, you also have x plus 5, the exponent earlier, is equal to logarithm of 1,000 to the base 2. All right. So this is how you convert it from an exponential form into a logarithmic form. All right. We have one last example here. Um, about logarithmic into exponential equations, right? So if you'd like to try them out on your own, of course, you may pause the video, try to answer it on your own, and then when you're ready, you may unpause the video and then you can see the answers. All right, I think that's enough time for you to have paused the video, work it out on your own, and unpause it to see whether your answers are correct. Okay, so take note, these are from logarithms and we need to convert them to exponential forms. Okay, so for number one, we have logarithm of 81 to the base three is equal to four. So take note, from a logarithmic form, the subscript is the base. So it should be three raised to whatever is on the opposite side of the equal sign. Because remember, logarithms solves for exponent. So 3 raised to the fourth, which is here, should be equal to 81. All right? For number 4, same process. Logarithm of x plus 3 to the base 2 is equal to 1. So the base is this small number here. 2 raised to the exponent, which is the one alone here. 2 raised to the 1 is equal to x plus 3. All right. So this is how we convert logarithmic expressions into exponential equations. Okay, so I hope that um, this week's lesson is actually quite clear. If it's not, of course, do remember that we have our weekly Google Docs. You may, of course, always post your questions there so that I can definitely answer specific questions pertaining to this particular topic. Right, so I guess uh, that's it for our um, week's lesson. Um, I hope you guys keep safe. All right, this is Mr. Tosino saying bye bye.